Okay, y'all. <clears throat> I know I've been gone for a while, but um, let's get back into it. So this is Exhibit A. Statement of Brett Payne. The below information is provided by Brett Payne, who is a duly appointed qualified and acting peace officer within the county of uh, Leta, state of Idaho. Brett Payne is employed by Moscow Police Department in the official capacity or position of corporal, corporal and has a trained and qualified peace officer for approximately four years, CPL Payne is being assisted by members of the Idaho State Police and agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. On November 13th at approximately 4 p.m., Moscow Police Department, Sergeant Blaker and I responded to 1122 King Road, Moscow, Idaho, hereafter the King Road residence to assist the scene, security, and processing of a crime scene associated with four homicides. Upon our arrival, the Idaho State Police ISP forensic team was on the scene and was preparing to begin processing the scene. MDP officer OFC Smith, one of the initial responding officers to the ticket advised he would walk me through the scene. OFC Smith and, uh-oh. OFC Smith and I entered the King Road residence through the bottom floor on the north side of the building. OFC Smith and I then walked upstairs to the second floor. OFC Smith directed me down the hallway to the west bedroom on the second floor, which I later learned through Xana's driver's license and the other personal belongings found in the room was Xana Kernodal's hereafter Kernodal room. Just before this room, there was a bathroom door on the south wall of the hallway. As I approached the room, I could see a body. Later identified as Kernodal's laying on the floor. Kernodal was deceased with wounds which appeared to have been caused by an edged weapon. Also in the room was a male, later identified as Ethan Chapin. Hereafter, Chapin was also deceased with wounds later determined. Autopsy report provided by Spokane Okay, so wait, is the second page redacted? Hold on, y'all. Okay, page two. Okay, county medical examiner blank dated December 15, 2022 to be caused by sharp force injuries. I then follow OFC Smith upstairs to the third floor of the residence. The third floor consisted of two bedrooms and one bathroom. The bedroom of the west side of the floor was later determined to be Kaylee Gonzalez, here after Gonzalez room. I later learned from review of the officer, a review of officer Nunez body camera, there was a dog in the room when Moscow police officers initially responded. The dog belonged to Gonzalez and her ex-boyfriend Jack Decor. I found out from my interview with the with Jack Decor on November 13, 2022 that he had that he and Gonzalez shared the dog. OFC Smith then pointed out a small bathroom on the east side of the third floor. This bathroom shared a wall with Madison Mogan's hereafter Mogan bedroom, which was situated on the southeast corner of the third floor. Oh. As I entered this bedroom, I could see two females in the single bed in the room. Both Gonzalez and Mogan were deceased with visible stab wounds. I also later noticed what appeared to be a tan leather knife sheath laying on the bed next to Mogan's right side. When viewed from the door, the sheath was later processed and had a Kabar USMC and the United States Marine Corps Eagle Globe and Anchor Insignia stamped on the outside of it. The Idaho State Lab later located a single source of male DNA, suspect profile, left on the bottom snap of the knife sheath. As part of the investigation, numerous interviews 
were conducted by Moscow Police Department officers, Idaho State Police detectives, and FBI agents. Two of the interviews include BF, which I'm guessing uh, is Bethany Funk, and DM, which is uh, Dylan Mortensen. Uh, Both BF and DM were inside the King Road residence at the time of the homicides and were roommates to the victims, to the victims, BF's, okay, Bethany Funk's bedroom was located on the east side of the first floor of the King Road residence. So, I just want to see something. They're saying... Okay, Madison Mogan, southeast corner. Okay, southeast. Okay, so where are we? Um, okay, so we we left off at BF's, Bethany Funk's bedroom was located on the east side of the first floor of the King Road residence. Based on numerous interviews conducted by MPD officers, ISP detectives, and FBI agents, as well as m- my review of evidence, I have learned the following. On the evening of November 12, 2022, Chapman and Kernodal are seen by BF at the Sigma Chi house on the University of Idaho campus at 735 Nez Perce Drive from approximately 9 p.m. on November 6, November 12 to 1.45 a.m. On November 13th, BF also estimated that approximately 1.45 a.m., Chapman and Kernodal returned to the King Road residence. BF also stated that Chapman did not live in the King Road residence, but was a guest of Kernodal. Gonzalez and Mogan were at a local bar, the Corner Club, at 202 North Main Street in Moscow. Gonzalez and Mogan can be seen on video footage provided by the Corner Club between 10 p.m. on November 12th and 1.30 a.m. on November 13th. At approximately 1.30 a.m., Gonzalez and Mogan can be seen on video at a local food vendor called The Grub Truck, at 318, okay, Maine, downtown Moscow. The truck, the grub truck live streams video from uh, video from their food truck on the streaming platform Twitch, which is made available for public viewing on their website. This video was captured by law enforcement. A private party blank reported that he provided a ride to Gonzalez. And Mogan at approximately 1.56 a.m. from downtown Moscow in front of the grub truck to the King Road residence. DM and BF both made statements during interviews that indicated that occupants of the King Road residence were at home by 2 a.m. And asleep or at least in their rooms by 4 a.m. Approximately 4 a.m. This is with the exception of Kernodo, who received a DoorDash order at the residence at approximately 4 a.m. Law enforcement identified the DoorDash delivery driver who reported this information. <coughs> Excuse me. DM stated that uh, she originally went to sleep. No. Okay, we only got a minute and a half. I'm going to leave this right here, <coughs> and we're going to come right back. We're going to, um, because we need to get into this about Dylan Mortensen. Um, so I'll be right back. 